Is it a misconception between nuclear weapons and nuclear power? Most famous U.S. accident, Three Mile Island. No one actually died from Three Mile Island. Even so, this thing that people view as this crazy disaster, and I think it happened right after a movie came out called The China Syndrome, which was about a nuclear meltdown. <laughs> so this movie came out, and right after this accident happened, and just drove, if you just project out AI demand, it's going to be equal to our grid by 2030. Do you think it's the fear of nuclear weapons? Like, is it a misconception between nuclear weapons and nuclear power? Yes. That, that, that has created the setback? I think there's, there's two things. There's the fear of weapons. There's also the fear of accidents. But if you look at the you know, most famous U.S. accident, Three Mile Island, no one actually died from Three Mile Island from radiation exposure, from anything else. What happened there? Uh, so, good, good question. So Three Mile Island was a famous uh, meltdown that happened in the US, in, uh, in Pennsylvania. And so there were two reactors on Three Mile Island, an island of land um, in a river, and a series of operator mistakes caused one of them to have a meltdown. Um, and what that means is the fuel overheated, there was you know, some issues caused by that, and then potentially some, um, the fear of a meltdown is that you get some radiation leakage, but you have containment vessels that contain all these things, and that's where a lot of the cost from nuclear comes from, is making sure that in no circumstance can any radioactive material ever release from the facility. And so Three Mile Island, um, one of the reactors shut, uh, shut down, melted, partial meltdown, due to human error, series of human error that due to process controls would not occur today. But even so, this thing that people view as this crazy disaster, and I think it happened right after a movie came out called The China Syndrome, which was about a nuclear meltdown. <laughs> so this movie came out and right after this accident happened and just drove the US into a state of fear about nuclear that lasted decades. And so fast forward to today, one of those reactors is still out of commission but the other one, Microsoft is planning to turn back on to power AI. No kidding. So they renamed Three Mile Island to Crane, uh, Crane Energy Center, I believe. And so one of those reactors is going to come back. So this thing that people really worry about, they cite Three Mile Island, they cite accidents. Hey, nuclear can't be safe. Nuclear is extremely safe. It's the safest form of baseload. And even the worst accident in the U.S. history, which was caused by human error that would not occur today and can't occur with the more advanced reactors, even that one results in zero, in zero deaths. And so by not building nuclear, we instead did lots of other stuff. We did coal, natural gas, wind, solar, all of those things we need, but uh, none of them are as safe as nuclear. Yeah. Well, I mean, do you think that, do you think any of the setbacks are, you know, big oil and gas industry and I mean, I don't blame them. I think I think the fossil fuels industry, oil and gas, have been doing what they've, you know, they're on their mission. Let's have U.S. energy independence. Let's, you know, pull from the natural gas reserves we have. Natural gas being half the carbon output of of other types of fossil fuels, and so, you know, that's that's been a big part of how the U.S. actually reduced its carbon emissions the last few years was was natural gas. So I think those companies are just laser focused on what they're trying to do. I think the fact that nuclear has not become bigger is a US policy decision and it's mm -hmm. the nuclear industry um, maybe not pushing hard enough for, for progress, really defending themselves. Because there's a lot of great people in nuclear who have believed in nuclear for decades and diligently worked away at it. And it should be much bigger than it is. Can you help the audience understand how much we could advance? You know, talk about the how important energy is in everyday society, and and especially with you know with the AI boom hang, uh, happening right now, and all the data centers that we need, and how much power that's going to con consume. I mean, can can you go into that a little bit on, yeah. on how important this actually is? Yeah, just to so set the stage overall, 
if we just talk about the U.S., U.S. has 94 reactors operating, produce 97 gigawatts, call it 100 gigawatts of electricity, and that's roughly 18.5% of our grid energy production. Um, in terms of how big this could be, I think total, so, you know, call it 5x that for the overall grid average production, and then total installed production capacity in the U.S. is like 1,250 gigawatts. So a lot of that's not operating all the time. That's like peaker plants. It might be wind, solar. Not everything is baseload. And then just to calibrate internationally, U.S. and China neck and neck in 2010 on production capacity on the grid. Since then, China doubled. By the end of the decade, it'll triple. So you can double and triple the grid if you want to. They've done a lot of that through nuclear, but much more with coal. And so other countries are expanding, and they're doing it not in the cleanest way. So us doing it with nuclear, us doing it with other things, you know, it displaces manufacturing that might happen there with a cleaner source of energy here. So geopolitically, if you think about us versus China, people are worried about conflicts of all types, AI conflict, kinetic conflict, economic, all three of those come back to energy. So if you want to have the U.S. being the lead on AI manufacturing or economic influence, you need to have the most energy. It's directly linked to GDP. Um, as a company, we believe in high energy societies, energy societies that consume and use effectively a lot of energy. And if you look at all the countries on earth, there's not a single country that is low energy and high GDP. So- he Sent yeah. us a graph, mm -hmm. energy consumption versus income per capita in 2022. I'll overlay that on the screen, but it, it shows high income, low in energy countries don't exist. Yeah. <clears throat> if you want poor countries to get the standard of living that we have, it's going to take more energy. So that's, you, you know, we can, we can look at the global lens and that's simply the reality. If you want, if you want everyone to have a good quality of life, you know, be able to heat and cool their homes, have refrigeration, have all the things we have, it's going to take a lot more energy, and there's there's no way around it. One of the big oh, is this India? Are they do they produce more energy than us as well? Uh, per capita, no. Let's see. Yeah, where's India on here? Yeah, <laughs> per capita, no. But um, overall, yes, India, China. Huge, huge production and consumption. I mean, in on top of that, I mean, I've been talking to a lot of innovators, a lot of tech innovators, which you said Dino Mavrukis on, who's um, founder of Saronic. Mm -hmm. um, been talking to a lot of a lot of AI types. Alex Wang had Sham Sankar in, and, and I mean, they're all talking about how much energy that we need, you mm -hmm. know, in 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 the race to AI. And so, I mean, I've heard of these mini reactors that people are starting to build. I don't, are those, I mean, are they using those yet? Is that legal? Not yet. They're not using them yet. In terms of the AI demand, if you just project out AI demand, it's going to be equal to our grid by 2030. It's just this exponential growth curve. And those are always hard to predict, but reasonable predictions say it needs as much as we have on the entire grid by 2030, which means we have to start right now expanding production of reactors, of fuel. And so to your question, are they using them yet? No, not yet. There's a lot of companies building, designing and now building and will be testing advanced reactor types. And I expect those to, we should start seeing those plug into the grid in about five years. And so we need to do that now. If you know it's five years out, okay, AI is going to consume equivalent to the U.S. grid today in five years Man, potentially. That's crazy. We need to go full speed on reactor licensing, construction, deployment, and all those reactors need fuel. No matter where you're watching Sean Ryan show from, if you get anything out of this, please like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly. Share this everywhere you possibly can. And if you're feeling extra generous, 
please leave us a review on Apple and Spotify podcasts.